Hello homies, in today's episode we are doing something completely different. As film photographers, every single time we press the shutter button, we are opening ourselves to a world of sheer disappointment when we get those negatives back from the lab. Every single one of those frames could be a monumental failure depending on what we did when we took the shot. The unfortunate thing about these monumental failures is that they cost us an insane amount of money nowadays. We pay for the film that we shoot, we pay for the cost of the lab, and ultimately, our egos pay the price of not being able to render good images on celluloid. So, today, I'm going to be saving you a little bit of heartbreak and hopefully a lot of money. These are my best tips for new film photographers. Let's go. Tip number one, don't shoot portrait. I know that sounds like blasphemy considering all of the film photographers exclusively shoot portrait and it's got an amazing reputation for its muted color palette and its ability to shoot multiple different lighting setups. But portrait is one of the most expensive film stocks that you can buy. So every time you make a mistake on portrait, you're paying a lot more money than if you were using something like Color Plus, for example. I once shot a whole roll of portrait only to get a blank roll back from the lab. I didn't load the film in properly and I shot all 36 exposures on the first frame of the film. I wasted so much money that day and my wallet still has not forgiven me. My recommendation would be to use something like Kodak Color Plus, Fuji C200 or good old Ultramax as your first couple of rolls to get yourself familiar with shooting film first before moving on to something like Portra. This naturally brings me on to my next tip. Always make sure that your film is loaded correctly in your camera before going out to shoot or else you're gonna pay the price of a blank roll. If you are not sure how to do this, a lot of different cameras have different ways to check if your film is loaded correctly. On my Canon and my Olympus, the dial that my film is attached to actually rotates when I'm advancing the film through my camera, but you can always hold the camera body up to your ear and hear the plastic being pulled as you advance the film through the camera. So always make sure that you've loaded it properly even if it means shooting one or two more shots just to make sure you've got the loading right. Tip number three, and this is probably the most important tip that I can give you, document your shots. When I was first starting out with film, I used to write down every single thing about the shot that I took on film. I would write down the aperture, the shutter speed, the way the light looked, if I was shooting in bright sunlight or backlit, and I learned a shit ton just from doing this single practice. I learned how to shoot into light like this to expose for the shadows. I learned that my max shutter speed that I can hit without a tripod is 1 30th of a second. You will learn so much about your personal shooting experience by documenting your photographs and wherever you go, I highly encourage you to take a pen and a book and write some notes, baby. Tip number four is one that you won't hear from many people, but take spares of everything. Take spare film, take spare batteries, take a spare camera if you can afford to. My Olympus, for example, will not fire if the batteries have run out. So I have learned the hard way to always take spare batteries for all of my cameras on every single shoot that I go on, just in case one day I reach the end of one of those suckers. I know that it's costly to buy extra batteries and extra foam and take it along, but it's always cheaper having a spare than going back to the location and taking the image again at a later date. Tip number five is the funnest tip of them all, and it is to cheat. Some people consider shooting digital a sin, and some people consider it a cardinal sin, but if you are just starting out in the film game, it could be one of the best ways to save money because you can meter and even test your exposures before you commit to shooting them on film. All you need to do is simply set your digital camera to exactly the same settings that you want to shoot on film and blast away. Take as many photographs as you want to, overexposed by three stops, underexposed by three stops. See and test the shot before you shoot it. It's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. I don't personally own a light meter and a lot of people on the internet swear by light meter apps on your phones but I've had some terrible results with those things. So more often than not I set up my digital camera and I take a test shot just to make sure that I'm exposing the image exactly how I want to before I take the image on film. 
Tip number six is to just have fun. I know that there's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind when you're making photographs out in the wild, but it's way more important to have fun than to come back with a set of bangers, in my opinion. Yes, you are more liable to make mistakes when you're having fun, but you'll gradually learn from those mistakes and you'll get better as you improve over time. Most of, if not all of your images are going to have imperfections in them, like scratches or grains or dust. It's the nature of the chemical process of film and it's much better to have fun and enjoy the process than to sweat the small things. My last tip for new film photographers out there is to try do it yourself. If you are already shooting your own film, I would highly encourage you to start developing, processing, scanning and printing all of your own work yourself. You're going to learn a whole lot about the process of film and how it interacts to different chemicals and what mistakes are developmental mistakes and what mistakes are shooting mistakes. There's just a wealth of knowledge to be gained by doing it all yourself. I know that this is by far the most expensive tip because you have to buy all of the chemicals and buy all the tools but in the long run you'll save a lot more money because you won't be relying on a lab to process your film or to print it it'll only be the cost of the film itself and the chemicals that you use to do all of this without a doubt the thing that taught me the most about photography is learning how to develop scan and print all of my work myself and i'm still learning till this day that's it for this video and all of my tips, but I'd love to hear what your tips are for new film photographers in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see y'all in the next one. Sayonara, suckers. <laughs>